Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today, I want to talk about FM synthesis, or frequency modulation synthesis. We're going to make some pretty simple but effective sounds, and you'll be amazed what you can do with only two sine waves and frequency modulation. So here is my Ardor session. I have already inserted four MIDI tracks with the SensibFX plugin. Okay, so... In case you don't know what frequency modulation synthesis is, let's quickly go over the basics. I'm going to insert an oscillator plugin on the master. It's called Simple Scope Stereo. Here it is. I'm going to make it above others keep it above others so it doesn't disappear. Now we're going to change the time window so we can see more detail, maybe enable the trigger. Now the level was okay, but the exposition could be, or maybe let's keep it at the center. All right, now, so now can, we can see the waveform, what we're doing, and also we can see frequency content. So we can see that now we are producing a single pure tone at about 460 hertz, 440 probably. Yeah, because that's the middle A. And this is a pure tone. So now let's have some fun with the nut sub effects. I'm going to audit the instrument. We're using the add synth engine. By default, it has a filter, Lopez filter. So I'm going to first disable the velocity sensing and make it all the way up so it doesn't affect our sound. If I were to ramp it down, you can see that our sine wave disappears if it's high enough to be attenuated by the filter. And we don't want that. So I'm going to open the voice settings, and here we have our oscillator. You can see that if I change it to something like a saw wave, for example, we have all the harmonics, odd and even, and this is a saw wave. Our oscillator confirms. I'm going to make this a sine wave again, and we're going to add frequency modulation to this. Now. If you're familiar with the concept of vibrato, that is playing a tone, but varying the pitch cyclically. You can see that our sine wave is now wobbling, and there are some also, this is also some distortion, but it's way below 80 hertz, uh, way below negative 80 decibels, so it's pretty inaudible. And if we make this smaller, yeah, you can see that our, our sine wave is stretching. However, if I change the frequency of this oscillation, of this change of pitch, if I make it faster, Suddenly, it doesn't sound like a sine wave anymore. And we don't have a single tone. We have a series of harmonics. And that's the basic concept behind frequency modulation. This is called LFO. That means low frequency oscillator. So this is used to create changes that are subharmonic speeds, so below 20 hertz. However, we can make it so fast that it is actually audible speeds, audible frequencies. And that's what happens when you do frequency modulation. So I'm going to disable this frequency LFO, so we have our simple sine wave again, and I'm going to enable FM modulation. So here's our modulation panel. 
and immediately you can hear that this is not a sine wave. And if we zoom in on our oscilloscope, this looks more like a Arctic Monkeys logo than anything. But if we ramp the FM depth down, you can see that it's created from the basic sine wave. And we have another sine wave used to change the pitch of the first one. Take a look at the waveform, how it changes, and take a look at the at the frequency content, how that changes too. When I just slowly increase. And if we make it too much, we get something that sounds like noise, but it's periodic noise. It's a short sample of noise that is repeating over and over and we have some steady tones, which is very useful because you can do stuff like bells, rings, and uh, crash cymbals and things using something like that. It's created with the FM synthesis. If you pitch this down, we're starting to lose the the notion of this thing repeating. However, if you take a look, it's still the same sequence repeating over and over. There are patterns here. So this is not noise, but it sounds like it. So what's happening now? I have changed the modulating sine wave pitch to four octaves down. If I shift it even lower, like eight octaves down, we have vibrato. This is exactly the same thing. Also, funny things happen if we change the pitches. Let's now synthesize an electric piano. Okay, so that's the basic of frequency modulation synthesis. Let's now scratch this and make an electric piano sound. So I'm going to reset this to zero. So we have our basic sine wave. Now, what electric piano is? It's a piano that has strings and hammers. However, each string has an electromagnetic transducer, like an electric guitar, and that captures the sound. And it happens so that you can achieve something that sounds very similar with just a tiny bit. Oh, we have this detuned. It's no good. <laughs> Okay, let's start over. And here is our basic sine wave oscillator. You can see that this is exactly what we get on the oscilloscope. If I enable this, we have multiple types of modulation. I'm going to pick FM. You can see that the waveform slightly resembles a saw wave, but not quite. And this sound is pretty close to our basic electric piano tone. You can imagine that this is an electric piano already. However, the string, when struck with the hammer, it loses the high frequency energy faster than the low frequency energy. So I'm going to add an envelope that is make this modulating sine wave change its amplitude along the way. And at first, we have long attack, so 
we're starting with virtually no modulation and then it goes up. If I turn this all the way down, we have all the modulation, so this higher level. Uh, also the problem is we have velocity sensing enabled, so if I hit the note gently, we have less modulation applied than if I hit it hard. So I want to disable this, and to do it I have to move the slider all the way up. Now, it doesn't matter how soft or hard I hit the note, it's gonna have the same timber, and that's what I like. We might restore a little bit of that later to get more life into our electric piano sound, but for now let's have it disabled, it's gonna make it easier for us to program the timber of the sound. So, I'm going to change the sustain value of the amplitude envelope for the modulating waveform to zero, so that it decays with time. And this is the decay time, so how long does it take for this sound to die off? And remember that we're operating on the modulating sine wave. This is the audible sound, and this is the sound that influences this sound. If I make this longer... You can see we have a kind of a naturally softening out waveform. That's pretty nice. What we can also do is add a little bit of the frequency envelope to create kind of a click at the beginning of the note. So I'm going to enable this. And by default, it creates a weird frequency modulated sweep because the attack value is way down low. So our oscillator starts at a very low frequency, and if I change the attack time to be smaller, that might give us just what we need. But it's still too long. You can see we're doing this ramp, but we do it very, very quickly, so we just get something like a little click. might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to make this amplitude value, sorry, attack value, closer to the original one. This is no change. It's going from higher to lower. That's gonna be good. Okay, now we also need to add an amplitude envelope to the carrier waveform. So I'm going to enable it here and do the same thing. We need it to start off quickly, so the attack time is all the way down. The sustain value is also all the way down, and now the decay time changes how long our waveform is going to take to get to silence. I'd say that sounds pretty natural. Maybe this is a little bit too slow still. Finally, we could add a little filter. We could go uh, one level up, so I'm gonna close this dialog, and here we have the global settings, where we have the global filter, the global amplitude envelope, etc. We were messing only with the first voice. We have eight of these voices there that we can change. I'm gonna maybe use some of that Lopez filter to make our sound duller, even duller. And I'm gonna use this filter envelope, I'm gonna change the starting, the attack value, all the way up, so we have a bright sound, and then it decays. Well, that's too fast. Well, that's nice. We can also reduce the Q. If I make it higher, we'll have a resonance peak sweeping through the spectrum. But we don't want that. We just we want this to be rather gentle and unnoticeable. To sound as much natural as possible.
What else we can do to make it a little bit more interesting is play around with the pitches. So I'm going to slightly, very, very slightly detune the modulating waveform. So we have a little bit of a vibration because they don't match in frequency perfectly. If we take a look at the spectrum, the fundamental frequency is pulsating. That also is a very, very dry sound, so we're gonna need to add some reverb to make it more believable and also more usable in a musical context. But something else I can do is add a little bit of harmonic content to this modulating waveform. However, if I do this right now, it's quickly gonna be a little bit too much. Just some little random harmonics. Maybe let's try shifting them in phase. This is a very simple sound, however, adding minute detail can make it more believable. Now oh, this is way too much, so I'm going to change the magnitude type from linear to negative 60 decibels, and this is make, gonna make these sliders much more sensitive, so I can input much lower values. We can also we could also use um, some randomization to uh, make the harmonics quieter and lo louder for different notes. So every time you hit a note, these values are randomly changed around. Basically, some harmonics are attenuated. They're gonna give you a little bit different sound every time you hit the key, so that might give you more realistic results. However, the fundamental might be affected a lot, so let's just try it out. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make it, it's now very, very, very much. I don't hear much difference, however, we can break our sound easily, making it go out of control, so I don't want that. All right, so what's left to finish this sound off is just add some reverb, maybe add a little bit of tape saturation to simulate the overdrive of the transducers inside the electric piano, because every single string or maybe not even a string, but a bar, a vibrating bar, has its own transducer, and if you hit a note hard, it's gonna distort on this transducer. So you can play with distortion. Right now we are distorting uh, a little bit of the master because I have cranked this instance as an SFX way up. I'm gonna maybe turn it down. And let's go to insertion effects. Let's insert an effect to the part one, which is the first one we're using. Let's do distortion. Well, that's a lot. We need something very, very subtle. Let's go low. For some reason it sounds quite dull. The 
let's make it half half dry, so half undistorted and half wet, so distorted signal. And finally, let's add some reverb. Well, that's too much. Uh, let's hype us the signal, so maybe let's listen to or just the reverb. Oh, we have a lot of initial delay, sometimes called pre-delay. Let's make this shorter. Also make the simulated room smaller. I would also go in with an EQ, try to give it some more brightness, because the sound is pretty pretty low frequency intensive, or low mid. Let's give it some brightness with a high shelf filter. Make it gentle. Okay, we're distorting the master bus. So this is our electric piano. Let's go in with another sound. Electric bay. I'm gonna just rename this to electric piano. Electric bass. Let's open up the instrument. And we have our familiar simple sine wave. Let's make it louder. I'm going to shift this sound two octaves down. So this is the key shift for this part. So I'm pressing the same key, but it sounds two octaves down, which is nice, because we wanna make this a sound of bass. I'm going to, again, ramp up the Lopus filter so it doesn't interfere with our timber. I'm going to enable frequency modulation again, make it very, very subtle. Let's take a look at our waveform. Maybe I'll change the level. If I now shift this simple modulating sine wave one octave down, we're gonna get a different waveform. And that's a little bit too much of the modulation. I'm going to disable the velocity sensing. And make this more subtle. And it reminds me of an electric bass. Well, that's the base of our electric bass sound, which is extremely sad, extremely simple. We just pitched, pitched the modulating waveform one octave down, and with a very subtle amount of the modulation, we have a very nice sound that is very fat, even though it's so simple. Also, we're gonna enable the amplitude envelope for the modulating waveform, so we can have this lose the harmonics over time. You can see our sound is getting more focused on the fundamental. The funny thing is, if you take a look, especially if I pitch it up, that our fundamental is in the center, but we're getting subharmonics because of this modulation. This is why the sound is so fat. Why it sounds so fat as a bass because we get harmonics below the fundamental. Or... So it's funny, it's actually shifting our fundamental down.
we need to make the sound monophonic because right now we can play a chord and that doesn't make sound doesn't make sense for a bass instrument so I'm gonna make this mono now if I press one note and press another you're gonna hear only one note at a time which is very cool we can also use the portamento feature to get ourselves a pitch slide that might be useful for some performance here in the controllers window we can also change the portamento parameters so at the time if we make it very very quick we can't we can't even hear it if we get very long well it's totally overwhelming our sound so that's not good there's also the threshold of uh, half tones so right now it the portamento won't occur unless we play notes that are three semitones apart make this very very long you can see I'm hitting C and then D there's no portamento if I hit C and then E we get this ramp so this is basically a filter we can make this all the way down to enable portamento for all notes or intervals C and D C and C sharp and I usually do that we can also invert this threshold and that will mean that only intervals below a certain one so now I'm getting C and F and C and E so now everything lower than four semitones apart will have portamento and everything higher won't well that's up to you but it's good to know that, that these options are there Maybe it's gonna make sense for the two semitone thing. Because you can, you know, shift your finger on the fretboard instead of just, you know, picking another note. So that might make sense. Okay. Let's add a little click to our electric bass. Again, let's try to do this with the frequency envelope. Let's also make the whole thing louder. Jazzy. I wonder if we can make this a sound like a slap bass. That's probably not gonna happen. Let's remember, 51. So it is kind of sounding like a more heavily struck bass but I'm gonna go down with the simpler one. Let's also try a little bit of saturation for it. So, insertion effects, part one, distortion. Well, that's radical. Now, we don't really need stereo, but here is a Lopez filter and the hypers filter and we can apply it after the distortion which is by default or before the distortion so we can filter out the bass and distort only the higher frequencies and then we can mix them back to the original signal so we're actually doing exciting yeah that's how exciters work they distort the signal filter out the lows and mix this back to the original signal We get quite a lot of noise, and that's probably because of Zenitsub FX's FM synthesis engine that has 
I heard it has a lot of aliasing in it. That's to be rehauled someday, but most of the time it's not a problem. Okay, so that's our bass. Let's go in with another sound and make a... Foreman Screamer Growl. Foreman Screamer Growl. Okay, let's call this Growl. No. We have our basic sine wave, let's make this louder. And same thing, however this time, we're gonna make it slightly different. I'm going to, of course, make this all the way up and disable velocity sensing. So we have all the high frequency content we can get. Now, we're gonna approach frequency modulation in a different way that gives us way more possibilities and that will also allow us to do some pretty cool performance because before we were using this modulator and it's built in oscillator. However, we can use a different voice as our modulator. Because of the way that Zenit SoFX is created, it's now only possible to modulate voices of higher numbers, like the voice two with the lower numbers, so with, like, with the voice one. So this voice one is going to become our modulating waveform. So I'm gonna make it all the way down to zero so it's not audible. You can play, nothing sounds. You can make it louder, it is there. Now I hit the note, nothing is there. And I'm going to enable the second voice, which has the volume enabled. And I'm going to enable frequency modulation and pick external modulator one, which is this voice. Now that's harsh. Now, if I tame that down, you can see that we don't have all the controls of this one because we are not using this oscillator and its settings, but we have an additional amplitude envelope. That sounds like a classic FM sweep, like something that you would get from an ad-lib sound card or something. I think this is how they made brass instruments with DX7 or something like that. Yeah, if you're into retro sounds, using FM with only sine waves is a good resign because the earliest FM synthesizers only operated on sine waves. And technically it was phase modulation, so PM. And they are slightly different, but with sine waves you don't really see any difference. Only the phase of the output signal is different if I if I'm not if I'm correct. But Yamaha DX7 only had sine waves. Uh, modern FM synthesizers like FM8, the nuts of FX, Helm, uh, Oxa, FM Synth, and others have various uh, waveforms. So we can use a triangle wave. That is going to give us a different result. Or a pulse wave. Right, <laughs> it started getting back. Let's get back to sine wave. So yeah. However, we're gonna make something vastly different. So I'm going to pitch our carrier waveform. So the sound, so the oscillator that we're actually going to hear, way down.
I'm going to disable this amplitude envelope. I'm gonna pitch this one up. And we're gonna play with the tuning. Yeah, so we have just two sine waves, one frequency modulating another one, and they are seven octaves apart. Now eight. Nine. That's too much, I guess. As you can see in the spectrum, that's quite an interesting thing happening there. If we take a look at the oscillator, oscilloscope, the waveform is wild. I'm looking for a vocal-like form and sound. I think it's it. That's it. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah. We have velocity sensing, so every time I hit a key, it sounds different. So I'm going to disable this. Now we have the maximum. Well, I think it's a little bit too much. You can see I'm switching between the voices, one and two, constantly. To change the amount of modulation. Now, if we could somehow control the pitch or the detuning, of this modulating waveform, modulating operator voice, and we could make ourselves this funky vocal growl sound, and we can do this. The answer is the pitch wheel. However, right now it's way too much, and I'm going to get back to the to the main window go to controllers, and here you can see we have the pitch wheel band range, and it's 200 cents, so it's two semitones. We can use these big arrows to make it zero. Nothing. And now I can make it one. And we have a little change. We can make it five cents. Maybe 15 is gonna be good. Yeah, maybe even 20. Now the problem is uh, we're changing the pitch of the modulating waveform and also of the modulated waveform, the carrier one. So I'm going to close this. Uh, we have the voice one, which is modulating, and voice two, which is the carrier. And here we have a little bend knob. Uh, and that changes the amount of the pitch wheel that is applied to this voice. If I turn this all the way down, uh, this oscillator is ignoring the pitch wheel. But this isn't. All right. Now, I think we could add a sub oscillator for proper bass tone. Oh, but we need to disable the band. Yeah, 
We could also have some fun and distort this thing. Uh, we could also do one thing, and that is high pass the this voice so it doesn't give us detuned uh, fundamental frequencies, detuned bass frequencies. I think we have a little bit too much of the distortion and it masks the deformant thing. Oh. We had Lopez filter on in the overdrive in the distortion unit. I think it's better now. Yeah. Let's now maybe... <laughs> Make a simple kick drum and make a little track with these three sounds. Let's give it a go. I'm going to enable MIDI input for this. I'm going to call it kick. Kick. I'm going to make this voice louder. Pitch it two octaves down. Add a frequency envelope. And amplitude envelope, so the sound decays quickly to silence. And that's our super basic kick drum. I can distort it. And that's an EQ with a high pass resonating filter, resonant filter. So we're going to get rid of of the low frequencies we don't want, and also let's accentuate the low, the low frequencies we want. Oh, it's distorting on the master channel. That's not nice. We can also add the high shelf filter to restore some highs. We have a kick drum. Now let's put some notes in. I'm going to we have tempo 120, that would be good. Let's put, oh, D to draw. I'm gonna put some, oh, I think I need grid. Yeah, that would be good to have a grid. Does it play? Yo, it does. Let's duplicate this, shift D is the key. 15 times, so we have 16, total 16 times. And now, let's just jam. Uh, three, two, one, go. That's our electric piano line, not too fancy. I got some extras, that means the system wasn't able to keep up and probably lost some samples, but for a MIDI recording that doesn't mean anything, like you don't run into problems with this. Let's record the electric bass. Now well, that's not the bass bass line. I never made the bass line so quickly so that Rather sucks. Now let's record a growl. And the good thing is we can record the pitch band action. I mean the pitch wheel. And uh, I'm going to show you this. When we open this A menu for automation, we have Bender. Let's go for channel 1 because we have 16 MIDI channels. And now we can see the pitch band motion and automation that is recorded inside the MIDI regions. So if I just hit record now,
Now, we couldn't see it as I was recording, but now you can see the motion of the pitch bend. If we right click here, we can change the mode to linear and that will interpolate between every sample. Uh, so we have more resolution. Let's probably... Well, that's way too loud. <laughs> well, it sounds really crappy. But it's pretty amazing what you can do with just sine waves and frequency modulation. Like, you would think that you couldn't get so much frequency content and so widely different sounds with just sine waves. The kick is also just a sine wave with a pitch band, with a pitch envelope going from up to down. Sine, sine waves, waves are, are awesome, awesome and frequency modulation is awesome too. So that's it for today. I hope you've learned something. This was kind of a basic introduction to FM synthesis using Zenat sub effects. Uh, I hope you liked it. You can download this session. There is nothing super funky, but if you want to play around with it, you can. It's created with Ardor 5.11. And, well, if you have any questions about this topic or other things and suggestions about what I should do in the next episodes, please leave them in the comment section below. I also want to make the big shout out to new patrons on patreon.com who support me since the recent video. And these are Amadeus Folego, Not101, Sirmachik, and also Linux Muso. I want to say big thanks to you guys. You're making this show possible. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing on Patreon because that can ultimately allow me to do this as a half-time or maybe even a full-time job. That would be truly fantastic. Like That would be the best job ever. Anyway, I'm getting back to finishing the album that I'm going to release later this year. And I hope it's going to blow your socks off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Silly. Dude, I have five patrons. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you can leave a comment or something. Uh, frequency modulation and pick external modulation, modula external modulator one.